way to close this out, let's go back to the land of college football. A very special game, one of the top most important games around here in terms of Sooner Nation, and that is the Red River Showdown. Played annually at the Cotton Bowl every I hate October. That they call it the showdown. It used to be the shootout, right? Yep. Well, you know, language, you know, semantics yeah, theme, some bull. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so yeah, the OU Sooners, the, what at the time, one and two OU Sooners coming up against the, I believe they were two and one. Two and one. Texas ranked Longhorns. Number 22 in the country. Number 22 in the country. And in a four, a quadruple overtime thriller, the OU Sooners come out on top 53 to 45. Over Sam Ellinger's Texas Longhorns. So I watched this game all the way through. One of the most thrilling and entertaining games I've seen in a very long time. I imagine you got two. I watched every minute. Watched of every it. minute of it. Okay. So I walked away from this asking myself, what are this year's OU Sooners? What is this team? Um, I can tell you. Okay. Children. <laughs> No, seriously. That's so that's I that's went harsh. back and looked at the roster. For the most part, they're playing redshirt freshmen and sophomores. Mm-hmm. Now, redshirt sophomores, of course, that gives them three years of being out on the team. So, yes. hell, they're even eligible to go into the draft if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. to have a little bit more experience, but they're a bunch of kids. They're, they they don't have very many juniors and seniors out there. They are young, and it showed. It showed with a lot of immaturity. It showed, I mean, Trey Brown, for some reason – Likes to get pass interference called on him all the time because he likes to hold. And then when they switched him with Woody Washington and gave mm-hmm. him the corner spot, mm-hmm. uh, I was listening to uh, R.J. Young, and he mentioned that he's a natural corner. like He's a natural coverage guy. Why wouldn't you play him at corner? And right. I think Grinch started to recognize that, oh, it's probably smarter to put him out there because he then got the interception that was supposed to close the game out. But the youth kicked in from Spencer Rattler getting benched because he was playing atrociously like a young player, Mm -hmm. to the penalties and turnovers, which was bad because they're young players. And then, for some reason, Texas wide receivers being open every other play. (laughs) It was amazing. But the the saving grace for OU that I think helps them going into next season, because this season's a wash for me in college football. I don't even care. Yeah. Um, They're going to have a lot of great experience. Mm -hmm. This is going to be more Grinch's guys. Mm -hmm. And so defensively, they should be better. But my favorite part about the way how they ended up winning this game is that defensive line was a monster. Mm-hmm. Did you see the pressure they were putting on Sam Ellinger yeah. the entire game? Yeah. They had him. And Sam's a big boy. Sam's what, 6'2", six, 6'3", two, six, two, almost 250? Mm-hmm. He's kind of like a Tebow type Yeah, guy. He's, he's a Tebow, Cam newton Estique type of guy. Mm-hmm. He's big. He's strong. You can't pull him down. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's probably not 240, but he looks like he's at least 240. Right. But – they were in his grill, and he couldn't go nowhere. That's not something I'm used to. It, it It's not something that's normal for OU's offensive line to get this much pressure because OU has an offensive line lineman that could do that type of damage since Gerald McCoy seven years ago. Yeah. So this is probably one of the better prepped OU teams. And, it, and for them, they lucked out that all of this went down in a pandemic <laughs> where everybody's basically putting asterisks on everything yeah. and we're really not paying that much attention because, hell, the other conferences still aren't playing. So they're lucked out. Next year, OU will be dangerous. Mm-hmm. Did okay. you, do you think Spencer Rattler has learned his lesson after being benched through the second quarter? Um, I won't say learn his lesson, but I think that that can actually be a valuable tool with Spencer because it gives him a chance to sort of back away from the game to decompress in a sense and to see cognitively what's going on on the field better. Cause when he came back, he was much better yep. than he was before that because he had had that time to be able to step away from the game and see things so that when he went back in, he felt better prepared and more confident because you've already been in the game and now you've had an opportunity to see some of what the defense is doing. Yeah. Now you go back in and just with that extra boost, that extra confidence of being able to see the game from an outside view, he's able to, actually play more like himself, I think. I see that. You know, because, you know, these college defenses, I mean, a lot, a lot like NFL defenses, they're throwing a lot of exotic things at you. So I think that for him, this may not be the last time that they have to do that. And if it works, it works. And it did. And you know, just this year's, this year's OU Sooners, to me, they're just they're, 
they're so much like the Dallas Cowboys. It, it's apparent why Jerry Jones loves drafting OU players because they're so much like the Cowboys. They really are. It's a fun, entertaining disaster at times. Yes. You know, shootouts, games that you win that you shouldn't. Hell, played in the state of Texas. So that's what this year's OU team to me is. I mean, Rattler, because Baker Mayfield, Murray, Hurts, they rarely threw interceptions, but he's thrown plenty already. Yep. So that just fits into the mold of what this fun disaster of a team actually is. So I, I had so much fun watching this team play. Yeah, I, was, I was frustrated at certain moments, but once you come to accept that this is how the team is and kind of what they're going to be, even though they're going to get better as the season goes on, because right. that's how they always do, Yep. Um, they're, they're hella fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure national people who care nothing about either of these teams or this rivalry, they enjoy watching this game because they watch it every year because it's one of the best rivalries. I was about to say, football. yeah, everybody watches this rivalry yeah. if they can. This is one of the, the better ones. Between this one and Ohio State, Michigan, yeah. are probably the two that everyone just goes all in. See, but you know what? But in a sense, this one is better because with Ohio State, Michigan – I mean, especially since Harbaugh's been the coach, we kind of know where that game is going. But with this game, you never know exactly where it's going to go. Like, it's like a movie you don't, you don't know the ending to. Whereas Ohio State, Michigan, it's almost like you accidentally read part of a review that revealed part of the ending. Right. So with this, yeah, I mean, four overtimes, nobody had any clue what was getting ready to happen. I'm trying to figure out how they just squandered away that lead, though. They were up 31 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Like, the game should have been over at that point. Yeah. The best of Sam Ellinger, you know invigorating his defense and putting the offense on his back. He didn't have enough to beat him, obviously, but quarterbacks like that who just are really are part of the culture and the feel and the pulse of a team, they don't just affect the offense. They affect the defense too. True. Yeah, Now, which I don't think he's a NFL quarterback necessarily. I could be wrong about that. But for this Texas team, a team that he's loved ever since he was three years old probably, yeah. even before that, he can have games like this where he wills his team back, but ultimately he made the mistake that lost the game for him. That's yeah. the way it was. He, he, he threw that interception yeah. that he should not have probably thrown. <laughs> right. But, I mean, it, it, hey, that dims the brakes, right? Yeah, yeah. Dims the brakes. So, I, I, I guess for me, Texas, of course, isn't back. Tom Herman should be on the hot, on the hot seat, mm. if not gone, by the end of the year. Mm. I know that we like giving him a lot of chances <laughs> just because of whatever reason or whatnot. But He's still living off the fuel of what he did at Houston, right? Yeah. Which is crazy. And the mm. fact that they what they won what, one Big 12 – Title oh, I in think five so. tries. I think so. Yeah, yeah. He's he's won he's won. No, not Big Twelve titles. Um, uh, uh, Red Rivers. He's only won one in five. Mm-hmm. Has he won a Big Twelve title yet? Actually, that's a good question. You know what? I don't think he has. So I mean, no, because no hurts. Kyler two years of Baker. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm curious if he ended up winning because they, they beat they beat OU one year, but I don't think they won the what you call it that year, did they? No, they have. He has not won a Big Twelve championship. Mm-hmm. That's that's he's been there, but are you but are you certain Texas can actually do better than Tom Herman right now? Like who else is out there? I mean, he's been there three years, so he's been there three. He's been there since uh, November of seven of six. So he's been there since seventeen. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I guess we'll we'll see.